Okay, so hello guys. So today we're going to learn about chapter 7, which is compression member. So column is the compression member. Okay, it's also called as vertical members that carries the compressive axial load. And the compressive axial load can be applied at the centroid and offset from centroids. So means this one, you can see that this is axial loaded column, means it's applied at the centroid. Okay, and then this is applied at the eccentric columns. In reality, it might have the eccentricity due to some errors. Okay, so this is more common. Okay, and the type of columns here, we can see that we can separate to two, which is short columns and long columns. And short column tends to fail by crushing. Okay, and then long column tends to fail by bucklings. Okay, so this is the difference of it for long column and short columns. And the critical load. And critical load, the meaning is the maximum load that can be supported when it is on the edge of bucklings. So means the maximum load that the column can support before the failure. Okay, so assume the column is pinned at both ends. So this is pin-pin connection. Okay, and then you can see that this is the buckling shape. Okay, so you can see that this, what we call the ideal column is, is initially straight, homogeneous materials, and the load is applied at the centroids. So this is ideal columns, okay? So the assumptions here, you see it for ideal column, from the beginning, the column is considered as ideal, okay? A perfectly straight before loading. Means it is perfectly straight, there is no buckling at all, okay? So when the load, P is increasing until failure occurs by fracture and yieldings. So when the critical load P, CR is reached, the column is becoming unstable. So it will buckle after the critical loads. Okay, so here we are using Euler theory. Okay, so later I will show you the example, three examples on how to calculate by using the Euler theories. And it is developed by the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler on 1757. And initially, developed for slender column okay so column with pin and support okay assumption is here column is perfectly straight okay and p is applied exactly at the centroid and no lateral load along the height of column material behave within the elastic really uh, regions or ideal rigid plastic or elastic plastic behavior okay so if you want to use Euler theories you need to use you need to have these four assumptions, okay? And then, so now we can see the formula from the Euler theories. From the Euler theories, we can know that the critical maximum load is PCR equal to pi power of 2 times E times I over L2, L power of 2. And then the L here, you need to use the effective length, okay? So for the effective length, you can see here, the LE effective, L effective is the effective length. Okay, for pin, pin and the condition, the here is pin, here is pin, the L is equal to 1 because you can see that this is the buckling shape is same with the length from the curved shape. Okay, and then the fixed, fixed support means here is fixed, here is fixed, the defective length is 0 0.5 L, means the buckle here is the LE here is only 0 0.5 from the total length. Okay. And then the LE here, the buckling here, when here is cantilever means here is fixed, here is free. The effective length actually is 2L because when you draw the buckling, actually is 2L. Okay. And then the fixed pin support means here is fixed, here is pin, you will get 0.7L. Okay. This is the L effective. So when the questions come out, so you need to check the support connections. Okay. Supports then you can identify the L. You cannot simply put the value of L. So PCR, the formula, the L will change according to the L effective. So the basic formula is pi square EI over L squared, but the L here will change according to the support conditions. Okay, and then the critical stress is P over A. Okay, stress is PCR over A, or either you can use pi square E over L times L over R power of 2. So the R here is radius of gyrations, so equal to square root of I over A. Okay, so now we go to the example 1. So you can see that a 7.2 meter long of steel tubes having the cross section shown in figure is to be used as pin-ended columns 
okay, determine the maximum axial load the column can support so that it does not marker. Okay, so check whether the Euler formula is appropriate or not by using the condition the critical stress must be less or equal to the, you, uh, the stress of Y, the yield stress. Okay, so given ES equal to 200 gigapascal and the stress Y equal to the yield stress equal to 250 megapascal. So I extract the data here, you can see that L equal to 7.2 meter. RO, the radius for outer radius is 75, and then the inner circle is 70, okay? And then the here you have the gigapascal and megapascal, so you, you need to do the unit conversion by yourself, but I, here I, can list, I listed to it for you. One megapascal is equal to one newton per meter, millimeter cube, and also one pascal is one newton per meter cube, okay? So first step here is you need to calculate the PCR, the critical load. So the critical load, we know the formula is pi squared EI over L squared. The L here, we will use the L original because for pin and condition, the L is equal to LE effective is equal to L, equal to 1L. So the I here, you need to calculate for the circles is pi D power 4 over 64. This is the formula for I, okay? So you need to calculate the I for the section which is the outer or either one over 4 pi r for power 4 so here we have the radius value so you use this okay you input the r outside and r inside power 4 okay then you calculate you get the i value so you put in the i value e value and l value here and then you calculate you get the pcr here you need to do the unit conversions by yourself Okay, after you calculate the PCR, you can calculate the stress. So stress we know is P over A. So you input the PCR and then you input the area, you calculate the area where area is equal to pi d power 4, pi d power of 2 over 4. Okay, so you input the value here, you get the stress critical. The critical stress here is 100.2 megapascal. So we can check now. Okay, the critical stress here is less than the yield stress, which is 100.2 is less than 250 megapascal. So, okay, the Euler equations here is appropriate. Okay, so now we go to example number two. Okay, so the steel with the size of W200 times 40 shown in the figure is to be used as pin connectors, uh, connect, used as pin connected at both, at the both ends. Determine the largest axial load it can support before it either begins to buckle or the steel yields. So check whether the Euler formula is appropriate or not by using the condition. The critical stress is must be less than or equal to the yield stress. So given the ES is 200 gigapascal and then the yield stress is 250 megapascal. Okay, so from this, it's already given you the standard size of steel. Still, you can check the table okay, uh, in the appendix. Okay, so from the appendix is in the table, you can check the uh, uh, material properties of that steel. Okay, so from this example, you can uh, given the A equal to 5892 mega, uh, millimeter square, IX equal to 45.5 times 10 power of 6. Okay, millimeter power 4 and IY equal to 15.3 times 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. By inspection, the column will buckle around about the principal axis of the cross section having the least moment of its inertia. Okay, so from the given I, IYY is the lowest moment of inertia. So column will buckle at this Y. Why? Why we need to use the like lower I, Y? Here, yeah, because you can see that PCR is pi square times E times I over L square. If you put the value of I, the least moment of inertia, the lower value of I, then you will get the lower stress. Means this is the critical stress for PCR. Okay? And then, but if you put the higher y, a higher value of I, you will get the higher value of PCR. Where actually, the color already buckle at the weaker axis, which is the IYY with the lower y. So it will not happen to have the higher critical load. So that's why we must always take the lowest moment of inertia, the IYY value, okay? So we put in the value of pi square, the E, okay, the I from the table, and then we put in the L's power of 2. 
The L here is also one because it's pin and supports. So you get the PCR. So once you get the PCR, you can uh, use it to calculate the stress, the critical stress. So the critical stress is PCR over A. So you input this value and also the value of A, you get the value of P, the stress critical here is 320.6 Newton per millimeter squared. Okay, so from that we know the yield stress of steel is 250 megapascal. So the rule of Euler equation is the critical stress must be less or equal to the yield stress. So here, however, you can see that 320.6 is greater than 250 megapascal. So means that this is exceed the yield stress for the steel. So the material stress, okay, the allowable yield stress is already achieved and is greater than that. So application of Euler equation is not appropriate. So what we have to do now is we need to use the yield stress from the of the steel to determine the new axial load that the column can support. So critical load equal to PCR over A. So PCR equal to stress over PCR equal to stress times A. So we input the value of the yield stress and the value of A. Then we calculate we can get the P that can be supported by the columns. So the P here that can be supported by the column is for 1472.5 kN. Okay? So example number 3 here says, uh, you can see that a steel column has a length of 9 meter and pin at both ends. If the cross-section cross -section area, cross-sectional areas has the dimensions shown in figure, Okay, so determine the critical load, check whether the Euler formula is appropriate or not by using the condition of critical stress must be less or equal to the yield stress. And then given the E is 200 gigapascal and then the, the yield stress is 250 megapascal. So again, you can see that this is from the previous chapter that we learned before. So what you have to do now is you need to calculate the stress, uh, the, the centroid for X and Y. Okay, this one I will not talk about much. You can refer to the video, previous video, okay? So, from this, this you can get the centroid of X and Y, okay? And then you can get the IX and IY, you calculate, okay? This is a long process, but you need to go through it, okay? So, for this, we will take the IYY here, because the IYY is 13.35 times 10 power of 6 millimeter power of 4, compared to IXX 28.45 times 10 power of 6 mm power of 4, as I explained before, you need to take the less IYY, okay? Because the column will buckle at principle exists at the cross-section with the least moment of inertia. So, after you get the I value, you input the pi square E, I over L squared, you get the PCR. Okay, so PCR value you calculate, and then you can calculate the next one is calculate the stress. So stress equal to PCR over A. Okay, so PCR where once you get PCR and stress, the critical stress and critical load, then you can compare to the yield stress. So the yield stress here is 250, which is greater than 59.4, then the Euler equation is appropriate. So the critical load here you calculate is correct. You no need to calculate the new critical load. So actually this chapter is easy. Okay, you basically you will have two two formula which is the PCR equal to pi square over uh, pi square times EI over L square, and also stress equal to P over A. However, you need to be careful when you determine the I and the L. You I, for I you must make sure you calculate correctly. Okay, according to the shapes needed. So for this example, we only have the I beams, the provided I, and also the round shape. So there are many other I you need to calculate for according to their shapes. And then the L here, you need to check the support conditions. It's either fixed air, fixed free, pin pin, or other conditions. So you need to refer to the table that just now I present to you. And then after you calculate the PCR, you calculate the stress. So once you calculate the stress from the Euler formula, Euler equation, sorry, okay, you compare to the yield stress. You compare to the yield stress, is is lesser, that means it's appropriate equation from the Euler equations. And if not, you need to implement the yield stress from the materials properties, and then you calculate the new load. Okay, so that's it for this chapter. So happy learning everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.